Welcome to the Wraith YouTube channel. My name's Deke. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Earthcrawl Mines with the Fiery Grounds variant. Playing Prot Warrior with the Colossus spec. We're going to set Bran up as a healer. And we're going to be using the Unbreakable Iron Idol and the Amorphous Relic. My current eye level for this run is going to be 609. And I do not yet have any set bonuses active. So for this first stage, what we got to do is just grab this flamethrower out of this box. And we're going to get rid of all the webbing on the ground as we move forward. One thing that I kind of figured out after this run on some of my alts is, holy crap, this flamethrower does a lot of damage to the adds. So in this T11, I don't focus on it quite as much. Obviously, you're going to have to be interrupting and mitigating and being very cautious with your play. But on the T8 versions, running my alts with my monk and my ret paladin, I basically just burned everything down with the flamethrower. It really nukes these little adds here, and it's good at killing the Bran Egg to get the dinosaur out. And honestly, it's not too bad on the elites themselves, so you can kind of blow all your kind of big cooldown rotation and then just start using the flamethrower. But obviously here on the T11, these things are quite powerful, and you want to make sure that you're playing around all of their abilities and not, uh, not just standing in place using your flamethrower. That's probably not the best idea. First stage is pretty straightforward. You're you're basically just trying to get rid of all these webs. You've got a little percentage bar here on the right-hand side you've got to fill up, and that really doesn't take too long, but you do just kind of have to navigate through all these mobs in here. I guess if you're doing things like using invis potions to try to just skip content, then maybe there's something you can do there, but I imagine that might be a little bit tricky too, just because once you kind of move up to burn the webs out here, uh, you might get spotted, and I'm pretty sure you can't use an Invis Potion and burn the webs at the same time. So, anyway, feel free to try skipping some of this stuff if you can once you reach 100%. But for me, I basically just kind of go through and fight all the mobs and clear the room out and get all the webs done. You know, I do get a lot of comments talking about ways to cheat things or cheese things or skip things or whatever. I honestly don't mind doing the content as it's intended. That's kind of fun to me, doing the challenges, fighting some of the harder stuff. There are a few uh, fights where I do take on some of these unique mobs in tier 11s, and they are very challenging to play against, and sometimes they kill you, uh, and sometimes you're able to get them down. But I think later in the life of the expansion, I'd be more inclined to skip over things and just get through stuff as fast as possible, where now, you know, I'm kind of enjoying the content, trying to learn everything thoroughly. So from my perspective, it's pretty good to kill everything and kind of figure out how to play around all the different mechanics that are intended by the developers. So Nerubian Web Spinners are going to be kind of your basic elite caster mob in this instance. And they do cast a spell that just puts webs back on the ground. So I tend to just try to interrupt and kick most of their spells. And when they start casting this web launch, then I will go back into the flamethrower and just kind of trying to cycle around, knock the webs out, and do some damage with the flamethrower while that's going on, just to keep the floor clean so I'm not accidentally stepping and stuff. This map is really easy to see the webs because it has such dark coloring on the floor, but some of the maps, it's actually kind of difficult to see the webbing. So I recommend playing semi-top down with your camera, which you'll see I'm kind of doing here. Uh, not much to this though. This is a Zekvir empowered pack, so it's a little stronger. But not a lot here. I'm just going to skip ahead. We're going to go on to the second stage of this instance, and we'll see what we have there. After we've cleared up all the webbing on the first stage and we get through all of the enemies in that tunnel, we're just going to talk to this uh, lamp lighter here, and then they're going to spawn a bunch of waves of enemies. So the waves come after you defeat whichever wave is out. This specific pull right here with all these really small mobs the best strategy that you can use here is not what I'm doing. What you should do is turn your flamethrower on and just walk your character backwards while you spray the cone in their direction and it just nukes all of this stuff. Uh, it's actually really fun to do. Maybe it's just fun because it's one button and you're just destroying the entire screen. But that flamethrower will do a lot of damage. I think on this pull you can easily do over a million DPS. So we just need to kill a total of 37 Nerubian ambushers. And like I said, once you defeat whatever's coming at you, more stuff immediately spawns. So you just kind of have to be prepared for that. The first wave is just all of those kind of small minions that, like I said, are good to burn down with the torch. Then you're going to get a couple of these bats, these spreaders, they're called. And they're flying around the air. So you need to kind of like look up with your camera and target them and pull them to you. 
because they just continually throw webbing on the ground. So you kind of have a couple of these you're going to deal with while there's a Threadmancer out, which you need to be kicking or reflecting spells on. And then once those are down, you're going to get another way of spawn on you. So it's really not that challenging of a wave-based system here. It's pretty easy overall. It's just kind of a variety of Nerubian enemies that you have to fight. One thing I'll point out while I'm fighting these enemies is that this room specifically, when you come into the room before you talk to the Lamplighter, go ahead and do a full pass, a big circle around the room and just check all the corners and all the little carts and stuff to get your XP for Bran. There's a lot of times chests and little curiosities sprinkled around this room that you can pick up and mining nodes and herb nodes and stuff like that. And there's nothing that's going to aggro you until you start the encounter. So you can kind of see there. there's some, some nodes and stuff in the back corner and some little curiosities. You can do it after as well, but if you want to just run in and pick all that stuff up before you start the encounter. Even on T11, there's nothing too challenging in this specific stage uh, that you have to pull. This is actually a pretty easy variant, this Earthcrawl Mines Fiery Grounds. I would say it's actually probably one of the faster, easier variants of delves to accomplish. So maybe look to this one if you're you know, trying to push into the higher tiers, this is a, a good one to do. Once we get this stage down, we're gonna have to run up this ramp over here and we're gonna have to start freeing lamp lighters. You have to free, I think nine of them before you get to the final stage, which is the boss. This kind of has four stages. The first stage doesn't really count as a stage. You're just clearing up a, some webs before you really kind of get into the instance. So, but it is a four stage instance, but it, it is pretty fast overall. And you can see every time I kind of finish off a pack here, more stuff spawns and you just, you're gonna reach that total of 37. I don't know what, why 37, but that's, that's the number they chose. So anyway, I'm gonna move ahead here a little bit and skip us in time up to where we get to the third stage. All right, with that stuff defeated, we're gonna just run up this ramp here. Uh, keep your eyes peeled when you go up this ramp because there are some curiosities that tend to just be stuck here in a couple of these little spots. There's not any here for me right now, but there usually are some there. And then up here on the top platform, there's a bunch tucked back into the left. Sometimes you can find a little mound back here that does have a special power in it. It looks like Bran did find that. If you don't wanna run back in here and get all this uh, treasures and stuff you probably can skip this pack you're able to burn the webs away there you can probably skirt around the edge of that and just run down the railroad track without fighting this pack if you want to all right so moving through that fight a little bit you can see back in this corner brand finds one of these uh, special powers so that's a good reason to pull that pack is sometimes you'll find that right there in the back corner and then right here to the left there is a chest you can see it's open there for me that is one of the chests for the achievements you need. You can jump off that onto that little platform. Pretty easy here with Heroic Leap, and that will get you one of your chests for the achievement. So now we start making our way through this next floor here, and again, you're just clearing webs and fighting enemies along the way. You can either click on the little cocoons to free the lamp lighters, or you can just burn them with your torch. So that's one good thing to know. You can just move through here with your torch burning all the cocoons and the webbing on the ground this phase takes a little while just because you have to free nine of these guys but you'll just be moving in a straight line until you reach the boss okay so moving us ahead here a little bit we're making our way through this tunnel and we're getting our cocoons and everything's going great pretty easy no issues no hiccups and then we see this uh this big spider guy here this is one of the unique mobs that is sometimes found in delves nine through 11. There was a change where they had them in eights for a little while and they quickly, or maybe like a day, and then they took those back out and put them in nines through 11. So this is Venom Bite. It's basically a spider with a rider. And uh, I don't like them. I don't like fighting these things, but I'm gonna do it for you. So these things hit really, really hard. I, I don't know how you fight one of these as a DPS. My strategy is just to try to stun as much as I can. The evasive dance is kind of a problem because you're unable to hit the spider with anything when that's up. But I am trying to use spell block here mainly because with Venom Volley, you can't spell reflect it because it's an AoE spell. So, but even with spell block up, the thing is just 
hitting me so hard and you're also getting a poison dot from the venom volley and then if you don't interrupt the venom bite you get a secondary dot from that so you have all this damage ticking on you i mean you can see some of the numbers that i'm taking you know 3 million 1.7 million that's i think the 1.7 million is just from the dot so you're taking a lot of damage in this fight and uh if i didn't have brand set as healer there's just no chance that i would be able to to beat this probably but hey, we're able to get it down, and uh, that's pretty cool to kill some of the uniques. I don't think there are any achievements. I've killed quite a handful of them, and I haven't seen any kind of special achievements for that. Maybe there's a hidden achievement that unlocks after you've done them all or something. I'm not sure. Then we're just back into old normal mobs. Super boring now. Once you fight one of these unique mobs, these, these mobs are just boring. It does seem that this tunnel leading up to the final boss of this variant has a lot of Zekvir empowered minions, so that's one thing. You're going to have to fight some packs that are a little bit stronger. It doesn't really seem to be that big of a deal, whatever power increases they have. You do have to kind of watch out for Zekvir's cone ability that he does uh, to, that pulls you in. So if you pull something out of the pack and you, you isolate it, he still has his cone ability that you need to watch out for. He'll hook you back in and it'll aggro everything. So something to keep in mind when you're fighting him all right once we reach this final cocoon we free the last lamp lighter we're on to the final stage of this variant and this boss is extremely easy you can see that there's kind of a cross of tracks railroad tracks that are going around basically she's just going to spell cast on you the entire time so i try to always spell reflect curse of agony to put the dot back on her and then I try to save my kick for Runic Shackles. The Web Bolts, I just use Spell Block and Ignore Pain to try to mitigate mostly just while dealing damage. And then she will channel this web towards one direction of the railroad track. And you, that's what identifies where the railroad cart is going to come from, is this long web. And you just need to move your character out of the way as it charges through. And that's really the whole fight. It's super easy. So I would, if you're playing a warrior, I would recommend reflecting the Curse of Agony, mitigating the web bolts, and then interrupting the runic shackles. And then you just dodge your cart, rinse and repeat. Super easy fight. Probably one of the easiest delve boss fights. So again, like I mentioned earlier, I think uh, I would suggest this delve and variant as one that you can probably push pretty easily it looks like i don't have any deaths in this run you start with three revives in tier 11 and you gain one life when you reach the checkpoint which i did skip over quite a bit of this delve just because it it's literally just going through a tunnel killing more and more and more zekvir empowered packs and it just kind of takes a long time on prot warrior not a whole lot to say here, just the kind of basic um, rotation of Nerubian mobs that you're fighting. So pretty straightforward, pretty easy. And yeah, we'll just let the fight finish out here. And you can just see that there's no more mechanics to be had on this one. I'm pretty sure that I spell reflected every single Curse of Agony in this fight. So I don't think she ever gets me with that, which is nice. But again, you just, you know being a little trigger happy you just want to make sure that you save your kick for either the shackles or the agony um, if you're not using a, a class that has spell reflect obviously then you can interrupt one of those but i find that reflecting it back on her gets her down a little bit faster and honestly this is probably a fight that you could swap brand over to dps but again the web bolts do hit pretty hard so if you're on a dps class or something you may want to have the heals just for safety. But overall, very easy. We'll get that last reflect on her. And that's it. That's a tier 11 Earthcrawl Mines. Pretty simple. This room has a lot of little curiosities you can run around and pick up also. Just make sure you thoroughly scour these big rooms. A lot of times the curiosities are hidden inside the carts or behind little pillars and stuff like that. Thanks for watching the video. Guys, thanks so much for all the support that I've gotten on this series. And please, if you're checking out these videos, can you please uh, go subscribe to the channel? That'll help a lot with growth and maybe hit like, leave a comment. If you have anything to say or you wanna discuss anything about Delves or any of the content I'm making, 
I really appreciate it, and I will see you guys in the next video. Later.